Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a GMAT prep website called gmathacks.com and I've also written a comprehensive textbook for GMAT math called Total GMAT Math. In it you'll find overviews of all the major topics that are covered on the GMAT quantitative section. What I want to walk you through today are some basics of coordinate geometry. So the very most basic of coordinate geometry is what it is we're talking about, the two-dimensional xy plane. So we have an x-axis going from left to right, we have a y-axis going up and down, and we have this point where they intersect called the origin, which has coordinates of 0, 0. So what that means is that as we go to the right, or as we go up, the numbers get bigger. So let's say we've got a number right over here. Sometimes you might see hash marks on the lines. For today's purposes, we're going to be doing some guesstimating. But this point right here is about, let's say, 6 over, which means the x value is 6, and it's 1 up. So the x coordinate is 6, the y coordinate is 1. 6 over, 1 up. We can move around, do something up here. This is, let's say, 1 over and 5 up, so the x coordinate is 1, the y coordinate is 5, and we can start labeling points anywhere in what are called the four quadrants. So all these numbers in this sector up here are all positive. You notice 6, 1, 1, 5, they're all positive. They're all to the right. They're all above this point 0, 0. But let's see what happens when we go down in the opposite direction. What about this point right here? We're going to the left of the origin, and we're going down from the origin. So this one is about 3 over from the origin, so let's, that's minus 3, and about 3 down from the origin, another minus 3. So because it's to the left and down, we're dealing with two negative numbers. In these two other regions, everything to the left of the origin is a negative x value, since this is the x-axis. So a point right about here, let's say, that's about 4 over to the left of the origin, but it's 2 above, so the y-coordinate is positive again. Over here, the x-coordinate, always negative. Up here, the y-coordinate is always positive. If we move over here, let's say to about this point right here, we're to the right of the origin. Right of the origin means the x-coordinate is positive, so let's call that a 3. But down below the origin, means the y-coordinate is negative. So let's call that a minus 1. So the key thing to understand is in each of these coordinates, or each of these quadrants rather, the quadrant determines whether each coordinate is positive or negative. Up here, everything's positive. Down here, everything's negative. It's all about the relationship to the axes, left and right of the y-axis, above or below the x-axis. So when you're plotting points, that's how you're doing it. If you wanted to pl plot a point of 4, 2, you'd go over 4 and up 2, right about here. If you wanted to plot a point 1, negative 7, you'd go over 1 and down negative 7. That's all there is to it. Now, of course, on the GMAT, coordinate geometry gets trickier than that. It's more than just recognizing points, identifying the quadrants, and plotting points. The next logical step is something called slope. So what we haven't talked about yet is lines on this graph. We could have drawn lines between any of these points, but I didn't want to get ahead of ourselves. The key thing I want to cover in this video is the concept of slope. I don't want to get into how to calculate it. The key thing is just intuitively understanding what slope means and how to recognize certain types of slope. So what slope refers to essentially it's a way of representing the angle and the direction of a line. So let's take a line like this one. It goes right through the origin. It just about splits the difference of this quadrant right here, splits it in half. So notice that it's going from left to right, bottom to top. It's going up and to the right. Anytime you have a slope that's going up and to the right, that means it's getting positive. So in this case, the slope is about 1. Anytime it's going up and to the right, the slope is going to be positive. But 
there's more dimensions than just positive and negative. So let's say we have a line like this one. In this case, notice that it's flatter. It's not rising as fast. So in this case, the slope is maybe about one third. So it's still positive because it's going up and to the right, but it's not rising very fast. Because it's flatter, the slope is closer to zero. If we have a very steep line like that, it's rising very fast. It's still going the same general direction, lower left to upper right, but in this case, the slope is probably more like three. So now that I've shown you some examples, let's walk through what slope is really about. What slope is representing is rise over run. The ratio of how fast the line goes up versus how fast the line moves over. So when you have a line like this, like the last one that I drew on the graph, it's going up very fast, but it's moving over pretty slowly. So the rise to the run, it might be going up three for every one it goes over. So in that case, the slope is three. But as with another example I showed you, we could have a line like this. It's not rising very fast, it's pretty close to flat, but it's moving over very quickly. So in this case, the rise might only be one, but the run is three. So in this case, the slope is about one third. Backing up to the first one I showed you, this one's about even. If you were to imagine the origin right here, it's moving up about one unit at a time. For every unit it goes over, it goes up one unit as well. So when you have something at a 45 degree angle like this that's dividing the quadrants evenly in two, that is a slope of one. For every unit that it rises, it runs one unit as well. Where it starts to get a little more complicated is when we get into negative slopes. So as I was emphasizing before, anytime you have a line that goes from lower left to upper right, that's a positive slope. You might have guessed from there that any line going from upper left to lower right would be a negative slope. And the rules for angles and their relationship to the slope are the same. So if you have a line, that's not a line. Have a line like this, it looks a lot like this one I drew earlier. Remember this one had a slope of one. This one is at about the same angle, only instead of going up, it goes down. So because it goes down, it's negative. But because it's a similar angle, it's also negative one. Remember what happened when we had this slope, the steep slope? That was a slope of about three, let's say. So if we have the same line steeply going down, because it's going down, we know it's negative, and because it has the same sort of steepness as this one, we can call that a negative three, or a negative four. The pre precision doesn't really matter for today's purposes. Similarly, something like this, still going down, but going down very close to being flat, that's a negative one-third. One more thing I want to cover talking about slope is that notice I haven't been very precise about where the lines are on the graph. So let's say we have a line like this. Let's say this slope is about two thirds. It's between the flat one that I was drawing and the even one that I was drawing with a slope of one. So the slope is two thirds. What the slope is referring to, as I've been saying, is basically the angle of the line. It doesn't matter whether it's up in this quadrant, doesn't matter whether it's down here, or right through the middle, all those lines are parallel. And if the lines are parallel, the slope is the same. So this one, if it's two thirds, this one has a slope of two thirds, and this one has a slope of two thirds. Because they're parallel, because the angle is the same relative to the axes, the slopes are the same. 